Hi everyone and welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video and I hope you guys stay tuned until the end. My name is Esther Vincent, also known as Leah Mia on social media. To follow me over there, would love to catch you guys up. How have you guys been doing? I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope it's going good for you all. You guys are staying safe and sound. Today I've got my curly hair up and it's all frizzy and I tried making it work. Well, I'm just gonna embrace it. This is my original hair. I have curly hair. I have had straight or wavy hair for the longest time ever since I was like in a teenage and I've been slowly transitioning back to my curly hair. So today I thought, why not just come up with my curly hair and not straighten it? I'm gonna embrace it because this is me. Have you guys catched my previous video? It was a crime story that took place in my country, Malaysia, and it was a sad one. It involves an eight-year-old's abduction, sexual assault, and murder. Nurin Jazlin Jazimi. If you guys have not checked that out, I will leave the link down below in this video's description box or at the end of this video you will see the pop-up you guys can click on it and you know that video will play give that a view as well thank you now as for today i'm going to introduce you guys to a supernatural creature that is widely believed in my country malaysia because mm -hmm, you all know we've got loads of them i think every country has a lot of legends and you know these kind of supernatural creatures but this is one tiny little creature that i would say most malaysians believe not just malaysians we have neighboring countries that believe in this little guy too which mysterious supernatural creature am i talking about here well this is the story of the toyo what is toyo well toyo is a mystical supernatural creature believed from malaysian folklore like I mentioned in the beginning, there are many similar beliefs of this creature in our neighboring countries. In Indonesia, it is called Tuyul with the spelling of T-U-Y-U-L, which literally means mischievous thief. Tiana is a Tuyul-like creature believed in the Filipino mythology. And in Thailand, there is a very legendary creature similar to Toyol named Kuman Thong. Yes, Kuman Thong. The belief of the creature's origin and the creature's purpose also differs with each country. In this video, I am going to be talking about the Toyo with the spelling of T-O-Y-O-L that we Malaysians kind of sort of believe. Well, not everyone nowadays believe. Those days though, those days when I was young, my parents age well a lot of people used to believe them but nowadays we are in the technology era we are in the it era there is no belief in supernatural creatures we've got you no know, the 2000s kids i don't think so they believe not everyone i'm not going to talk for everyone here but yeah those days we 90s kids the 80s kids we used to believe in it but yes i am going to be talking about toyo the one that we Malaysians believe. So where and how this creature, Toyo, came to be? There are many, many versions on how these creatures came to be. Some believe that this is a child's spirit invoked by Bomos. Bomos are a Malaysian shaman from dead human fetus or aborted babies using black magic. Other versions say that Toyol is an offspring of the jinn, the pre-Islamic supernatural creature, or more like the devil. So this jinn's offspring, which is said to be the Toyol, was either kidnapped from the jinn, or a deal will be made between the jinn and the owner to raise the Toyol for themselves, meaning whoever wants to own this particular creature, the Toyo, they would have to sort of like make a deal with the Jinn to say that, you know what, I'm going to raise your offspring. I will take care of it. If you're okay with that, let's make a deal. Sort of like that. I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say here. It's either 
you know, the Toyo is either kidnapped from the gym, which is the supposed devil, or I'll take care of your baby. Let's make a deal. So yeah, that's one of the beliefs. The Toyo is said to be a very hideous looking creature. It sort of looks like a mummified baby. It is said to have like a grayish green uh, skin color. It has a very sharp teeth. It has a bulgy, bulk looking head, pointy ears, and some also say that it has bloodshot red eyes. You can imagine seeing something like that lurking around and not getting a heart attack. Some say the creature resembles a goblin, and this creature would mostly be kept away in a dark place or inside of a jar until its assistance is needed. What do I mean by its assistance is needed? Well, like what the Indonesians call it, the Toyo is definitely a mischievous thief. People who are summoning the Toyo or agreeing to raise one are literally making a deal with the devil. Why are they risking their life or taking such a big risk? Well, they've got no choice. They are either desperate, you know, they are in a very, very desperate state, or they are greedy. Yup, greedy. Greed. If you ask greedy for what? Greed for money. They say greed is the root of all evil. Also, lack of money is the root of all evil. So there you go. I think you would have gotten the idea. So these Toyo owners, people who own Toyo, would use this creature to steal. These Toyo owners would manipulate this creature to go around their neighboring houses to steal. And this used to happen a lot in the villages those days. I myself have personally heard stories from so many people that I personally know that money has gone missing from their house, not just money, but also jewelries. And it does not go missing in a big amount altogether one day. No, it goes missing little by little, you know, maybe 50 ringgits first and then 100 ringgits, or, you know, it goes missing gradually. So when it's summed up, it becomes quite a big amount. And they all used to suspect that it is Toyo and someone in their neighboring houses is doing that. I have also heard that this creature, the Toyo, does not know what to take. So the owner of the Toyo have to show it like, hey, this is the $10 bill, this is the $20 bill or $50 bill, or, you know, jewelry, whatever it looks like, gold color, you know, you gotta take that, that is what I want. You know, they would have to manipulate it or teach the creature on what to take. So the creature goes to whatever house that it targets and finds for it. And when it finds whatever that its master shows it, it takes that. This mischievous thief, Mr. Toyo, normally does his job at night, but there are also stories and videos that I've seen, you know, captured on CCTV where it came stealing during the daytime, but it never actually got caught. Like I mentioned in the beginning, this creature has blood red eyes. So some believe that this bloodshot red eyes gives it the ability to see through things, especially cupboards or safe spaces so that it can steal easily. After successfully stealing, the Toyo goes away and humans, the people, the owner of the house will later find childlike footprints and fingerprints in the scene of the crime. Sounds cute and innocent, like a small child, you know, doing naughty stuff, but no, 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 Esther, this is not cute. No, this is a demon child, Esther. What am I talking about? So yeah, it's it sounds, it may sound cute, but no, it's not cute. It's a, it's a demon. So that is the Toyo's occupation. That is what humans use the creature to do. And as a reward, it would be fed and taken care of by the owners. The Toyo's main food source is blood. Yep, you heard that right. It is after all a demon, so it feeds 
on blood. This is where the story gets a little bit creepy. Some say that the Toyo only feeds on the blood sucked from its owner's thumb. Ooh. Meaning the Toyo's owner would have to prick his or her thumb and allow the Toyo to suck on it and feed itself. Like a damn baby. If the owner refuses to do so, this creature, the Toyo, has sharp teeth, so it will forcefully suck blood from the owner's toes or the toes of the owner's uh, immediate family members while they are sleeping. Now, it is said that when the Toyo actually sucks on the blood from the toes, the person would not feel anything. They would continue on sleeping and this creature would be feeding itself off your toes sort of like the leech yeah they say you know leech when it's latched onto you sucking your blood you don't feel anything i don't know i've never experienced that but yeah sort of like that they say toyo also eats milk and eggs some sources mention that toyo needs to be taken care of like a child meaning it needs to be given candies and sweets and toys Talking about toys, the nature of Toyo is that like of a slave child. It liked to play with toys, more like, you know, curious about the toys. And it is said that if ever at all, while the Toyo is on its stealing spree, it comes across a toy, it would be playing with that toy till the dawn, forgetting what the master has ordered it to do. Now I sort of feel sad for it because Esther, no, stop it. Stop it, girl, no. <laughs> oh God. There are some prevention methods taken by the people those days to avoid their valuables to be stolen by this creature. Placing needles under the money can ward off this childlike creature because it is afraid of being hurt by sharp objects. Mirror is said to do the same trick as well as the Toyo is afraid of its own reflection. Toyo can be treated as a child as well by distracting it. Like I mentioned, it is a very playful creature. So Toyo would get very distracted with marbles or beans. So when you maybe pour around some marbles or beans, the creature would slowly start counting them one by one till the dawn. Or the one that I mentioned earlier, toys. These creatures get very, very distracted by toys. So if you leave very peculiar toys around your uh, valuables, this creature would get very distracted by the toys, playing with it until the dawn, forgetting its task. Now, at the end of the agreement, when a master or the owner of Toyo comes to an end of the agreement made with the jinn earlier in order to, you know, have uh, the Toyo, there are some rituals that needs to be taken place, that needs to be done in order to set the creature free. After all the needed ritual is done, the urn or the tablet needs to be carefully buried in a graveyard to set the spirit to rest. Or there are also some sources that say that the urn or the tablet can be thrown into the sea to set the spirit free. The spirit meaning the Toyo. Now, what happens when the master or whoever the person is did not make a clear ending on their agreement? The Toyo will stick itself to the owner for the rest of their life and their descendants would be doomed to own the creatures generations after generations as well. Now that's scary. That's why they say don't involve yourself with the supernatural because you just don't know what can go wrong. In 2016, a fisherman while fishing found a glass jar, a very small glass jar hooked to his fishing net. When the fisherman inspect the jar, inside of it, he found a black figure which looked like a frail human baby or an unborn fetus, which had a pair of bloodshot red eyes. Sounds very much like a toyo to me. 
To his horror, he was convinced that he had stumbled upon a toyol which had been disposed on the scene. Well, yeah, me too. I believe that as well, Mr. Fisherman. He then later passed that glass jar to a Bomo, Malaysian shaman, and the Bomo later on passed it to a museum. Why the museum? I don't know. But the right parties from the museum did some research and they theorized that that was a fetish creature which was used in a healing ritual and later on cast it out in the sea as a part of the ritual. Hello, the sea is not a place for you to litter, okay? Get that. It's so easy for people to just throw things in the sea and imagine that it will just dispose by itself. No. So the right parties from the museum theorized it as a fetish creature. What do they mean by that? I don't know, but they say that it's not a toyo. But not knowing what to do with it, they placed that jar in the museum for display for some time. That drew a lot of visitors to that particular museum. People were anxious to see what's supposed to be a supernatural creature in real life. So I think they made some money there. Smart museum. After some time, the right parties did some ritual towards the jar and again returned it back to the sea. Mm -hmm. They threw it back on the sea. There are many, many stories such as this widely available around Malaysia from CCTV capturing Toyol-like creature to Toyol getting caught while stealing. There are a lot of these available. There are also picture proofs like the one that I shared throughout this video. So many pictures of Toyol-like creatures available in Malaysia. But despite all of this proof, there are also a lot of people, a lot of parties that do not believe the existence of Toyo. Well, it's understandable because, you know, until you experience it by yourself, until you see it with your own eyes, it's a little bit hard to believe because it is a mythology creature. It is a supernatural creature. How about you guys, any Malaysian friends who's watching this? Do you guys believe that, that there's Toyo, that Toyo is real? Do let me know. Well, as for me, um, I don't know. There is no proof that Toyol is not real, so it can be real, it cannot be real. I don't know. Such a diplomatic answer, I know. So that, you guys, is the story of Malaysian's mythical creature, supernatural creature, the Toyol. What do you guys think about this story? If you guys liked it, do leave me a thumbs up. That would mean a lot to me. If you guys had stayed tuned until this minute, thank you so much. That really does mean a lot to me. I appreciate it. If any of you guys have any similar experience with Toyo or any creature similar to that, do let me know. I would love to hear that. And with all that said and done, we have come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and wherever you are, stay safe, be safe, take care, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, bye!